Hello my dear kiddos warm welcome to the session i hope you all are doing very good so today we are going to see a very very interesting phylum what is it phylum platyhelminthes right children what is the meaning of platyhelminthes the word helminthes refer to worms okay platy means flat so basically we are going to learn about the flat worms okay that is what we are going to do so now one unique unique feature of this phylum is that all of these right are going to be dorso ventrally flattened what is dorso ventrally flattened what is the meaning both the front and the back right uh, of the body of the worm will be completely flat 2d flattened structures okay so that is the unique feature now let us go as per our way of studying which is nothing but general characteristics first followed by the typical characteristics okay right so now children first the general characteristics So what are the points we usually discuss here The first point is habitat habit then we'll be talking about body organization then body symmetry body coelom then what else germ layer and body plan then lastly segmentation correct so now talking about the habitat right children they are both aquatic as well as terrestrial they are both aquatic water living and land living also children mostly they are endoparasites mostly endoparasites what is meant by parasite which suck the nutrients from the host right endoparasites they live within the body of the host and suck the nutrients and some of them are free living also okay so this is regarding the first general character body organization for the very first time organ level of organization very very important so far may it be porifera or coelenterata porifera cellular level coelenterata tenophora tissue level this is the very first time organ level body symmetry so far in coelenterates and tenophora we saw radial symmetry here for the first time bilateral symmetry bilaterally symmetrical body coelom acoelomate no body cavity body cavity absent very very important germ layer for the very first time triploblastic three layers endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm right and blind sac body plan that is a single opening through which ingestion adjustment takes place segmentation very important pseudo segmentation pseudo segmentation or pseudo metamerism i have taught you right which is false segmentation nothing but they are just externally only externally segmented not internally just externally segmented and each segments have a name which is called proglottids each segment we call it proglottids clear kiddos so these are the points you have to know regarding the general characters quickly copy it down okay so now moving on to the typical characters
So yes, as I told you, proglottids are each segment name, right? So where can you find those proglottids in a tapeworm called Tania solium? Tania solium is a good example of this platyhelminthes. Okay, it's basically pork tapeworm, which will have segments, external segments called proglottids. That's an ex extra uh, information. Okay, right. So now moving on to the typical characters. Firstly, let me talk about the unique, unique characteristic, right? These are parasites, I told you, right? So they have some parasitic adaptation. What do they have? Parasitic adaptation. So that they can do their job easily. The very first adaptation is they have hooks and suckers. What are these hooks and suckers now? Hooks are like you know sharp projections on their body which helps in adhesion, attaching to the host. Suckers are also structure present in the body which will help in attachment not just attachment but also for suction, sucking the nutrients right for ingestion of nutrients so hooks and suckers are structures special structures present in their body right if you see in tania solium they have both hooks and suckers uh, you know the, uh, the another good example for this platyhelminthes is fasciola hepatica which is nothing but liver fluke we say okay which will have suckers okay the second adaptation is they have cuticular lining. What is cuticular lining? Children, generally the name cuticular, cuticle means uh, outer protection like a skin, right? So it provides protection against intestinal enzymes. okay and then thirdly one important thing is they have absence of digestive system or i can say uh, incomplete digestive system okay why why do they say that because they are obtaining their nutrients directly from the host sucking the nutrients correct yeah so these are uh, the important features which you have to know now moving on to the rest of the typical characters. So what are the characters we usually see? All those digestion, respiration, circulation and all. So second point is digestion. So as I told you, they are purely extracellular extracellular digestion they undergo purely extracellular digestion that is breaking outside and just sucking it absorbing it right and they have incomplete digestive system blind sac na just a single opening so incomplete digestive system okay Next point regarding uh, respiration and circulation both through general body surface. GBS means what? General body surface through diffusion. Okay. Now very very important excretion market important. Here they have the special cells. So see, this is how their excretory system would look like. Okay. So these are called flame cells. There are two other names for the flame cells. It is otherwise called solenocytes or you can call them protonephridia. 
these are the other names flame cell solenocytes protonephridia all means the same so what are they going to help in very very important excretion they help in what excretion not just excretion another function is osmoregulation they also help in all right so what are the flame cells otherwise called as solenocytes or protonephridia going to help in excretion and osmoregulation osmoregulation is like maintaining the water balance salt water balance right and most importantly children the type of excretion here is going to be ammonotelic what is ammonotelic they will excrete out ammonia as a waste product getting it all right so we have seen digestion respiration circulation excretion moving on to the next one system sixth one i guess yeah nervous system and sense organ children nervous system if you see these are non chordates right platyhelminthes so definitely they won't have a notochord but they will have a nerve cord so basically here they will have a ring like this called nerve ring and at the bottom they will have ladder like structure which is the nerve cord so basically this is the nerve ring and this ladder like structure is ventral double solid nerve cord okay so remember that they don't have notochord but they have a nerve cord what is ventral double solid you can see it's like a a uh, ladder right it's a double solid structure ventrally located in the front with a nerve ring this is how their nervous system looks like talking about the sense organ they have few chemoreceptors only chemoreceptors which can sense few chemicals okay very 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 important point then comes the very important one about the reproduction fertilization and all okay so talking about the reproduction aspect children they undergo both asexual as well as sexual reproduction okay asexual reproduction what are the different means they undergo regeneration very important so one good example of uh, this platyhelminthes is planaria okay which is a flatworm planaria the scientific name if you see is dujecia this has high regeneration capacity very very important okay and uh, some of them may undergo fragmentation and they can also undergo something called strobulation strobulation is like budding okay these are the various asexual modes talking about the sexual reproduction children these are hermaphrodites and i uh, let me recall this hmb last lecture i told you this right h for hermaphrodite hermaphrodites are uh, organisms which have both the sexes A male and female in a single body. H for hermaphrodite. M for monoecious. What is monoecious? A single body will have both the sexes. B for bisexual. Both male and female organ. Okay. And the next point, which is fertilization, if you ask, what kind of fertilization? They undergo internal fertilization. Very important. they undergo what internal fertilization clear so moving on to the next typical character which is development and very very important okay 
what kind of development generally we see whether they undergo direct or indirect direct means larva uh, is not present indirect means larva present here it is indirect which means larval stages are present here we are going to see for two different things okay one is for fasciola hepatica fasciola hepatica means liver fluke the one usually in the cattle okay which causes uh, liver rot and jaundice okay and the second one which we are going to see is tenia solium the larval stage is present in tenia solium tenia solium is nothing but pork tapeworm okay these are two good examples of platyhelminthes so first we will see the uh, larval stages in phaseola hepatica so basically children there will be host these are parasites right so the primary host of this uh, phaseola hepatica is sheep okay in the sheep liver secondary host is snail okay now what happens is that the adult which is present in the sheep liver undergoes sexual reproduction and produces larva which is called miracidium this miracidium larva is a free living larva okay this will enter into the snail body okay which is a secondary host and what kind of larva is that called as sporocyst sporocyst radia these are present in the secondary host and this radia becomes cercaria again this still remains in the secondary host okay so this is again present in the secondary host this cercaria right what will it get converted into meta cercaria and this meta cercaria will get deposited on the leaf so when a sheep comes and eats those uh, those plants this larva will enter into the sheep body again the cycle continues ka i mean that is the facial hepatica in the sheep okay sheep liver will undergo sexual reproduction and become miracidium which is free living enters into the snail forms sporocyst radia cercaria and then the larva meta cercaria gets deposited on the leaf when a sheep eats those uh, plants this meta cercaria is going to enter into the body and it is going to continue similarly for tenia solium if you take okay similarly uh, similarly for tenia solium if you take the primary host here is going to be human secondary host is going to be pig okay so the adult present in the human primary host will undergo sexual reproduction and becomes larvae oncosphere that becomes hexacanth okay and that is going to become cysticercus larva okay so when this pig meat pork is eaten by the human that enters into the human so basically uh, the adult tapeworm will be present in the human fecal matter when that is consumed by the pig it is entering the pig body right where it is becoming uh, oncosphere and hexagonth inside pig secondary host and then it becomes cysticercus larva and inside the pig body okay when this uh, pig meat is cons that is pork is consumed by the human that again enters into the human being okay children 
so this condition only we call it teniasis right where uh, you know the larva is entering into the adult body <coughs> all right and finally the examples so the examples of this phylum you can write as dugesia which is nothing but planaria then already i have named two tenia solium which is nothing but fork tape worm then another one which i told you is tenia saginata which is basically beef tapeworm then if you see there is something called echinococcus very important echinococcus is the smallest tapeworm which is present in the dog dog tapeworm smallest tapeworm okay okay and then one important thing of course fasciola hepatica which is liver fluke and then last but not the least chistosoma okay which we call it human blood fluke which is the only unisexual platyhelminthes this alone is unisexual all others are bisexual okay this uh, chistosoma alone is unisexual all right that's all children with that we are completing uh, the phylum platyhelminthes hope you all enjoyed and i would like to give you a homework question here you can put your answers in the comment box below uh what kind of fertilization takes place in platyhelminthes and also what kind of reproduction takes place in platyhelminthes comment your answers in the comment box below and the next lecture will be about phylum askhelminthes that will also be very interesting so let us catch up with the next lecture tada bye bye take care